almost immediately you can see the the sheer muscle and size difference uh, that Peter Quillen has over Soraya, and uh, you know he's a big guy. You know, and, and it's no it's no secret that he hasn't uh, he has trouble making middleweight uh, for his last couple of fights. But he made it this fight good, and he's looking sharp. So hopefully he can be a uh, he can be effective and not let that weight loss uh, that we've seen in the past uh, come out and haunt him. Right, so how do you feel here you analyzing what he's doing but he wants that fight's <laughs> supposed to happen with you and he in December now yeah. he can't look ahead to it but but you sort of can because you're not in the ring fighting so so what do you think uh, uh, as you're watching this and uh, it, the whole thing unfold um, you know it's uh, I'm a fan of sport of boxing and you know you see these things happen all the time uh, you know key example Marvin Hagler versus uh, 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 Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, when Sugar Ray Leonard came out of retirement, you know, the whole big deal was uh, they wanted to make that fight happen, and, and uh, eventually they did, and it was a, one of the greatest fights of all time. You know. That's what we're trying to do now. You know, a lot of Brooklyn fans have been wanting this fight for a long time, and uh, hopefully we could get it done by the end of the year if he looks impressive and get the victory tonight. Tentative date, early December and December 5, and uh, it would be a barn burner for the, the, the uh, borough and, and for New York. Of course, Zarafa would love nothing better than to spoil those plans but uh, remember the quillen is several knockdowns uh, especially early in fights oh yeah he's an explosive guy i mean he comes out with that sheer power and once he hits you i mean you know those first couple of rounds if you don't have your legs under you he, he can get you out of there and that's for, part of the reason why he has a lot of early knockouts quillen trying for another one and this is something designed to make him look good uh, an, an opponent that doesn't have his range of experience first fight in the united states for zarafa mentioned that kid chocolate because he took the name of legendary cuban fighter from uh, nearly a hundred years ago now there was a fake jab left hook that landed to the side of the temple of Zarafa by Peter Quillen. You know, he's landed that shot in previous fights, and that's one of his go-to punches. You see one thing with the jab, but then he turns it over quickly. Yeah. So for Zarafa, the good news is he got through the opening round. how he gets it done here. Good right hand by Zarafa found a little bit of a hole in the defenses of Quirlin. And that's one of those things where we said before, when you don't know a guy, when you got a guy that's coming around for the first time and you can't really get acclimated to his style, you know, you don't have anything to go by as far as training offer. So when you come in there and show you different things, this is what you have. Jab in the right hand by Quirlin missing. And that's a distance thing here. Yeah. That's it. Good movement here, and then inside went Quillen, but it was just a little outside. So they'll try to tighten it up. So into the second round we go. Dave Bontempo and Daniel Jacobs with you on Premier Boxing Champions. Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, USA. Daniel, one of the big names, 160-pound division. Gennady Golovkin, Miguel Cotto. This man here, Peter Quillen, David Lemieux. What a great fight that's going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just have to love the middleweight division right now. It's probably the second best uh, division, uh, second to uh, the welterweight division. But boxing, like I said, is at an all-time high. And, you know, uh, boxing fans are getting their money's worth. And now that we have boxing on free TV, they're, they're, well, they're, that all was, they have to do is just turn the TV off. That's back to the glory days of boxing is exactly. what they've done here. And uh, th this could be 
when you look at the end of the year, arguably maybe the best year ever in boxing history as far as the significance of fights made. And the fact that one thing I love is you get guys in the top ten fighting each other. They might not have a title fight, but you're seeing the guys in that fight for four to earn their title shots. Absolutely. Yeah, this year has definitely been a really good year for boxing, the transition that PBC and, you know, the whole movement that it has had has given all those guys great experience, great exposure, and, you know, we all want to become superstars. Well, if you have a TV and a chair, you're in a prime spot this year. <laughs> exactly. And I know people, this network, that network. Started back in March. You were right next to me then. Oh, Our yeah. first one back with Keith Thurman in Las Vegas. And now here we are a few months later watching Peter Quillen and Michael Zarafa. Good double jab in the right hand by Zarafa. One thing I noticed about Quillen that doesn't serve to his advantage is that when he slips, he slips with his hands down. And that's not a good thing because, you know, this is boxing. Anything can happen. You can get caught with a punch with a glance. But if you have your hands down, you can land on the right spot and you, know, you can get hurt. So it's a little bit of like not taking care of business. Exactly. You do the slip with the hands down. <laughs> exactly. But some guys form patterns inside the gym and some guys have habits that are uncontrollable. You know, that's why you have legendary trainers who understand the training methods of training behind guys, bad habits. Get them to work within that habit because and, and, you may not be able to change it. Exactly. And, and if you think about it, ultimately a guy's going to go back to what he knows how to do best. And that's his habits. All right, so Michael Zarafa traveled a lot further than Peter Quillen to get here. Twenty-five hundred miles. Compared to 125 for Peter Quillen. Uh, Peter Quillen, well, maybe he had road construction, but <laughs> and look at look at Michael Zarafa. Yeah, A he, pilgrimage. He came a ways about. How long as took you up? Uh, actually, Melbourne, uh, Australia. <laughs> you went there, all right. Yeah, you you know about town. that loop. Absolutely, 24-hour ride. <laughs> the people around Zarafa. If I was in Zarafa's corner, I would urge him to use that jab more. As we can see in the early parts of the round, uh, Zarafa, when he came out, he started using that jab and movement, and instantly he started to give Peter Quillen a little trouble. So to serve him best, I would stick back to what, what works for him. Third round action, Peter Quillen, 31-0, 22 knockouts on the right of your screen. And Michael Zarafa, 17-1, nine knockouts. As you saw from the graphic, Quillen from Brooklyn, New York. And Zarafa from Melbourne, Australia. You know, one thing that I've learned, from my travels to Australia is that those guys train differently. You know, they, they have different patterns, different methods, and, you know, when you come over here and you fight a guy um, that's not used to that style, you can cause trouble, you know. Um, Peter Quillen hasn't shown in too much trouble, but, you know, the style that Zarafa is displaying is a little bit awkward. Yeah, so what would be some of the differences you might find in an Australian fighter? You're talking about awkwardness. The, the training patterns, um, you know, the way they spar, the way they uh, do certain things. It's just they set themselves up in position to do things unorthodox so that mainstream boxers or, or, or American boxers, because American is big in boxing, and, and they, they want to go against the Americans. So when they train for guys like that, that's how they train. A pretty good effort so far from Zarafa. And he walks into a shot by Quillen, and so he's on the bicycle real quickly here. Now, we've seen other fights in which Quillen had a height and reach advantage, but those numbers negate each other now, and so it's a different type of a fight for him. Different type of fight, absolutely. You know, he's going to have to uh, uh, let the whole full arsenal out tonight. He's going to have to 
if if possible, if necessary, face adversity because, like I said, this guy, you know, we haven't seen this guy before. We don't know what he's going to fully bring, and he might be hiding something up his sleeve as well. Talk about awkwardness. He looked a little awkward with that uh, that left hook that uh, Quillen hit him with in his reaction. But how about now, Daniel, the age of social media, and you can go on and you might cue a guy's name and his name will come up and you can watch some of his fights. So even if you don't know, I guess in this day and age, you really have to know. Right, absolutely. So, you know, that's why I kind of wish I lived back in the days of uh, the Muhammad Ali's because social media wasn't really a big deal. And now you have guys who just, you know, say a lot of different things to, a lot of negative things rather to uh, fighters. And, you know, it, it sucks, but that's the world we live in today. And uh, all you can do is just ignore it and be a true champion. The good part is you can scout anybody, and the bad part is you could be insulted by anybody. Exactly, and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> so we come to the end of oh. round three as a stiff Quillen jab gets in on Zarafa. Good start to this one. Little tangle up here, they come together and then more like, him, is that sending a message or what is that? Yeah, more like roughhouse tactics. That wasn't definitely a legal move. Um, but you know, this is professional boxing. If you have to uh, let them know who house it is by doing things like that, then that's just what you have to do. If they don't see it, it never happened. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Peter Quillen, Michael Zarafa, round four on Premier Boxing Champions. Dave Bontempo and Daniel Jacobs with you from Foxwoods Casino. And Daniel, let's talk about the mindset of a fighter. You're Quillen. It's known that you guys are supposed to fight in a couple of months. I mean, yes. that's what's going around now. But you have to fight before that happens. Now. How do you separate that? We've seen some guys able to do it. Some guys have a, a letdown in that fight. You know what? Because they get ahead of themselves. They catch their, they, they, they uh, count their eggs before it actually hatches. And you are not focus on a, the opponent that you have in front of you, then you can get ahead of yourself and, uh, you know, get uh, beat or get outpointed or whatever. But nice left hook by Peter Kitchhock McQuillan. Like I said, that's been his favorite punch. That's been his go-to punch. And he's looking like, wow. Back and forth action. He wants to open it up now. And we talk about how you have to stay focused and not look past the guy. And in this age of social media, when everybody's bombing ideas back and forth, there are no secrets anymore. <laughs> they were working on something. Well, that's been out for 10 minutes already. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Great action in this round so far. This is, to me, probably the best round from both fighters. Both fighters are giving it their all. Lots of exchanges. We see Quillen closing the distance here. Looked to get off first. Nothing was there. He tried an uppercut. That jab been missing from uh, his arsenal today, Peter Quillen. Uh, he's just now starting to make it work. And I think if he can get in the habit and the rhythm of it, uh, it'll serve him well. Because the power puncher is really not used to having a really good jab. Good left hook by Quillen, and he landed it again. And he was almost flat-footed when he scored with that one. So you know he's marked that one to go back. <laughs> Absolutely. Left hook by Zarafa, then he ties up. Now you mentioned the jab of Quill, and it hasn't been there. And when he's been throwing it, he's been short with it. So he's been yeah. starting it from further out. Now, now, what causes that from a strategic standpoint for the guy to be too far out to throw his jab? Um, it could be numerous of things. It could be errors of training. Uh, just 
not understanding where you are in the range, not understanding the distance. And, you know, distance is a uh, training method in itself, so you can't get the distance if you can't win fights. Quillen had his left hook going now. Boy, that's a octopus-like <laughs> left hook, huh? <laughs> and he leaped in the air with it. It sounded like Superman. So, you know, you got to be real careful with that. You can't lean back with your head down because you got a flying hook coming right after it. Well, that's something you, you just can't wait to throw. Of course, if you're a step closer, right? that's on the chin and the guy's down. Exactly. All right, so Quillen and Giraffa starting round five of 12. Quillen 31 and 0, 22 knockouts. Giraffa 17 and 1, nine knockouts. Talked about the well-traveled journey of Preeta Quillen. Baptized at New Barclays Center with a victory to capture his championship. Sank to his knees, crying. The emotional outburst after that one. Uh, what a journey it had been for him to get to that point. And another fight that he was coming in. They had footage of him coming in and just talking to people. He was walking into work because he lives in Brooklyn. Met the people. I'm just on my way to work. And he's working hard here with a good right hand on Zarafa. And Zarasso on shaky oh, he legs. Him with that right hand. This could be it. And it is. Arthur Mercandi says that's enough. And just like that, circle December 5th on your calendar. <laughs> if the negotiations proceed as they've been. And that's sudden victory from this guy. Absolutely. But definitely, but definitely look for different outcomes. <laughs> that happiness in the, the family. Right. This is how he does it. Winding it up. That you know against certain type of opponents. You're not going to get that kind of an opportunity to throw a right hand. Absolutely, like that. absolutely. Yeah, and even as he's doing all these things, I'm looking at all the things that I can do to capitalize of all of his mistakes. So um, he's a straight, he's a great uh, champion. Uh, he got a great, impressive knockout tonight, but, you know, I'm looking forward to our matchup and I, you know, look forward to uh, getting the victory. Good left hook here by Peter Quillen. See, he's getting hit with some of these shots, but as he gets an opportunity, he almost has time to hold the press conference before that last right hand to throw <laughs> the right. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah. I'm going to load it up. And he definitely loaded it up. That's one of his flaws. He's, you know, he puts it from all the way back, and you telegraph your shot. If you're a talented guy, you know, you can see that. But uh, unfortunately, he's a lot for one day to do that tonight. And you see some things where it, he didn't pay the price, but he got hit a lot in certain situations. Yeah, he definitely got. He definitely got hit a lot. He, de he definitely was able to see some flaws. And you definitely. Were, Myself, personally, I would able to see certain things I would able to capitalize off if we were to step into the ring. So, you know it's all about getting to the gym, doing it, and uh, December 5th, give those Brooklyn fans what they wanted to see.